Neos R, Canon's first stab at a full-frame mirrorless camera has finally arrived. The Canon EOS R marks a big shift in Canon's high-end camera lineup. It's a full-frame mirrorless camera intended to sit next to the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV. That is one of the most well-regarded DLRs for pros and amateurs with money to spend. Unlike the EOS M5, a more affordable mirrorless model, it looks and feels like a traditional Canon DSLR. And thanks to the quality of today's top electronic viewfinders, there's no shortfall in the quality of the shooting experience. It's an obvious choice for Canon fans who already have a stack of lenses they can use, with the help of the often bundled adapter. However, next to the Sony a7 III it's just not as good for handheld low-light shooting, if that's what you're after. The Canon EOS R marks a big shift in Canon's high-end camera lineup. It's a full-frame mirrorless camera intended to sit next to the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV. That is one of the most well-regarded DLRs for pros and amateurs with money to spend. Unlike the EOS M5, a more affordable mirrorless model, it looks and feels like a traditional Canon DSLR. And thanks to the quality of today's top electronic viewfinders, there's no shortfall in the quality of the shooting experience. It's an obvious choice for Canon fans who already have a stack of lenses they can use, with the help of the often bundled adapter. However, next to the Sony a7 III it's just not as good for handheld low-light shooting, if that's what you're after. The Canon EOS R looks and feels a lot like a DSLR. It's smaller than the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV, closer in scale to Canon's APS-C sensors models. However, it is immediately clear that making the EOS R as small as possible was not top of the design priority list. This is backed up by its initial lenses too. The kit lens, and 24-105mm zoom with constant f-4 max aperture, is not compact or light. This is probably not a setup that will encourage you to take your camera out more often. And at launch there's no alternative to the Sony's ICE 35mm f-2.8, made for Sony's A-Series, which gets you close to this shooting style. Portability of the launch lenses may not be great, but this is because Canon clearly wants the EOS R to appeal to its long-standing fans and semi-pro users and some of its mirrorless APS-C models to date haven't so far. The Canon EOS R's classic sensibility comes with an impression of sheer quality. I may have ended up with a bit of muscle soreness in my weak little forearms after a while, but this camera is a joy to use. Chunky settings dials that rest by your thumb and forefinger offer manual control more intuitive than that of most mirrorless cameras. And while the grip isn't quite as ergonomic as my personal full-frame favorite, the Nikon D750, it offers a very sure, controlled feel. There's one slightly odd control. A capacitive slider sits by the EVF, on the back. This is a programmable control you need to assign manually. It's handy for access while using the viewfinder, but I'll admit I haven't found an unmissable use for it in my own shooting. The EVF is a personal tech highlight of the Canon EOS R. Its 3.6 million dot OLED screen may only equate to 1280 by 960 pixel, and higher resolution EVF panels do already exist. Earlier in 2018, Sony announced an EVF module with 5.6 million dots. But the EOS R's is really great. It's sharp and clear enough not to seem like a compromise next to an optical viewfinder. There's no obvious OLED saturation, no overbearing pixelation and the size of the preview image is great, even if the Nikon Z6 offers greater magnification. It's also an excellent ultra low light focusing tool, as the image brightens hugely beyond what you'd see through a traditional optical viewfinder at night. Focus peaking is available too, and you can choose the thickness of the crisp focus outline and its color. Manual focusing feels good too. Canon's 24-105mm standard lens has a pleasant, smooth manual focus wheel along its barrel. The Canon EOS R switches quickly between the rear screen and EVF using a proximity sensor on the back, like every camera in this class. That rear display is a 3.2-inch LCD with an articulated screen, 
I find this less useful than the simpler flip out one as it's slightly slower to use, but it's more flexible, particularly for vlogging. It folds out on an arm, and can point in front of the camera, making it better for image review at a strange angle. However, as I noted about the size and shape of the EOS R body and lenses, it may not be the best fit for quick and agile street photography. Walking around with the display poking out to the side also makes me feel like an early 90s dead on holiday with a camcorder. Bye. <laughs>